Uh, yes, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, Swati. So you are in IRS, right? IRS IT. Yes, sir. Have you done? So you are on training or your training is over? Uh, sir, I'm on EOL, sir. I joined and I came on EOL. Oh, so you joined and you have taken EOL. So you'll be losing on seniority, right? That's, uh, that's, that's the condition of EOL, right? Uh, sir, uh, sir, I'm not exactly sure of that, sir. Never mind. So uh, tell me, Swati, uh, you already have got IRS, right? Why you want to become an IS officer? I am Sajal and I have mentored almost 200 rankers in last 4-5 years. We know what challenges you face and that's why Civils Daily follows a personalized, student-centric and evidence-based approach through our mentorship program. Every student is assigned a dedicated mentor who helps you learn and apply the strategies of our past toppers. There are several sub programs, prelims test series, main test series, and the most uh, helpful to me has been the mentorship program. My mentor, I will not touch him for 3-4 hours, so I will send him a message to me. The targets of your targets are not achieved. Because there are many uh, stress, there are many things that happen. This is what I discussed. So I have been able to comprehensively improve my preparation with this program. With Randhi Sir, my efficiency has increased. I have to say that I am going to crack the prelims in the prelims. Uh, sir, uh, uh, the, I'm very happy that in my last attempt, I could get into IRS IT, which is a very important service. Uh, but uh, my passion lies towards IAS, which I developed during my college days, uh, where I had the opportunity to visit various farmers' fields uh, as my graduation is uh, in agriculture. Uh, I understood the ground realities in agriculture and the problems that they are facing. It is very complex and... Uh, uh, it uh, addressing certain verticals like productivity or uh, credit would not be sufficient uh, in my opinion. So I thought that uh, my knowledge and my experience in agriculture can be put into better use if I get into IAS through better policy implementation and better policy making. And even if I can do it in very small scale, uh, that would give me an immense job satisfaction. You, you mentioned a couple of uh, challenges, right? The vertical side problems and, and credit issues. Could you please just elaborate on, on those, those two points? Uh, sir, uh, the uh, problems faced by agriculture, the major problems include uh, productivity. As uh, our productivity is very low compared to uh, other countries like China and USA, it is just one one half and one fourth of these countries respectively. And in terms of credit, uh, the farmers are facing challenges with regard to getting credit, uh, especially because uh, of uh, poor digital, poor land records, and they are not able to give the land record as collateral. So that is affecting the uh, flow of institutional credit and they are resorting to money lenders, which they charge exorbitant interest rates. Tell me, Swati, we are on one hand, we are saying that our productivity is not, not, not up to the mark or to, up to the international level. Then we, we come across news that there's so much of food grains are wasted in FCI go downs. Then we have got people who are, who are, who are suffering from hunger. So, and, and then uh, we, we don't want, uh, uh, no, uh, we, we don't have enough money to procure. There are so many things interlinked. Do we need to in increase uh, uh, productivity? Because if productivity increases, the ultimately prices would go down. And those who are, who are uh, producing these uh, uh, food crops, they actually would suffer. So what's the point in focusing on that? Uh, so uh, uh, to answer the first part of the question, which is regarding the uh, high pro food productivity, but we are uh, lo losing a lot of grains because of uh, post-harvest losses, uh, like uh, lack of storage infrastructure. So for that, we have to bring in reforms within our uh, uh, FCI. Uh, we can go for procurement at state levels and uh, FCI can procure only the surplus grains and supply it to the deficit states. And secondly, the uh, FCI also can outsource the storage activities 
to uh, warehousing corporations or to private players uh, sir uh, to answer the um, to answer the second part of the question um, uh, the rising productivity is essential because uh, the land resources are limited and our population is growing so we have to satisfy the increasing uh, requirements of the people and at the same time uh, we also have to diversify into other areas especially into pulses oil seeds uh, fruits and vegetables which are essential for uh, our uh, controlling our food inflation and to ensure nutritional security in india so if if you think that such steps are needed <clears throat> so many things actually been then when why government withdrew this uh, farm laws it was supposed to be uh, helpful for the farmers so what went wrong uh sir uh, the government had said that uh, for withdrawing these farm laws uh, that it was unable to convince the farmers about the benefits so that was the main reason why it withdrew and it also uh, made sure that uh, future consultative approaches would be taken to bring about more reforms in agriculture so but then there was no uh, if government could not uh, convince the farmers but there was no protest in down south there was no protest in eastern part of the country there was just protest in in some pockets that is punjab haryana and uh, western up so if we go by the majoritarian majoritarian politics then the majority was satisfied with the farm laws there was no protest in tamil nadu i guess there was no protest in bihar jharkhand or assam just just to satisfy isn't it a, 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 what we call a vote politics rather than actually focusing on the farmers interest uh sir uh, as you have mentioned the uh, uh, the protest in the other parts of the country were very rare and uh, were limited to certain pockets so uh, so in my opinion that the farm protest were going on for so long it was essential that we had to come up with some form of compromise on that uh, and uh, certain parts of the country like for example shetkari sangatana is a union a farmers union in maharashtra that welcomed these farm laws so i think it is uh, time that we come up with a broad consult with farmers from various parts of the country to uh, bring back these farm laws in a more uh, acceptable way for the farmers okay, so you have a interest in garden farming right kitchen gardening yes sir you have you have, you have studied agriculture engineering also right agriculture agriculture science right yes, so what is the zero budget natural farming um so it is a type of farming in which uh, the uh, inputs into the farm is very limited uh, so that the agriculture takes place within as zero budget that is the cost of cultivation is very minimal and to achieve farming through natural means so that the farmers can get a higher income so if this policy is to be this seems quite uh, uh, you know promising so if this particular methodology is to be propagated which all crops would you recommend to be covered in this zero budget natural farming to start with uh, so initially we can start with uh, millets and pulses which require very low amount of inputs and uh, certain fruit crops also require very less inputs so so, so such a way of farming can be promoted and another thing is that integrated farming systems can be promoted so that there is higher recycling of resources within the farm and the dependence on external inputs is very low tell me something this, this right now this is a uh, organic products are in vogue right organic honey organic peas organic pulses and they are they are really costly tell me two things first how exactly this organic certificate is given point number 2 i mean why are the uh, these products so costly um so uh, to answer the first part of the question uh, there are two ways of certification for organic produce one is under the ministry of commerce that is the npop uh, under which uh, the uh, uh the uh, surveys are taken in the field and the graduation process is uh, uh there are certain guidelines under which the farm must comply with to get the organic certificate 
and the other is the PGS India system, uh, which is working under the third party uh, certification mechanism, uh, where uh, the uh, pure farmers will uh, visit the farm and will uh, provide for the certificates. This is working on a cluster based approach. Uh, so to answer the second part of the question, which is about the high price. Uh, so it is because of the demand in the market. Uh, the production is very low in terms of organic produce, but the demand is very high. And hence, uh, the, the price is also high. But if we see actually the uh, cost of cultivation is low and the produce can be sold at a lower rate also. Why uh, people are not adopting this organic farming at the mass level? Like per se in Punjab? Uh, sir, uh, in Punjab particularly, the problem is with regard to the uh, availability of uh, huge amounts of organic inputs. Uh, and secondly, uh, for uh, converting uh, farms like Punjab into organic uh, way of farming, it requires huge amounts of organic inputs uh, compared to other parts like Sikkim, where the soil is naturally high in organic material. So the huge amount of input requirement uh, actually deters the farmers from adopting it. And the third thing is that there is a three year transition period between uh, conventional farming and organic farming. So that period, the farm farmers will have to go for, uh, the returns would be low compared, comparatively. So uh, that is your second question. Yes, sir. Can we talk about uh, foreign relations? Yes, sir. Have you heard of the term AUKUS? A U K U S. -A. Yes, sir. So it is a grouping uh, in an informal grouping uh, consisting of Australia, uh, UK, and US uh, that aims to promote uh, free, open, and uh, inclusive Indo Pacific. Isn't, don't you think that this is an extension of NATO in? Uh, 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 Indian Ocean. Uh, so uh, there are basic differences between NATO and AUKUS because uh, NATO is a security alliance. It's a military alliance uh, which works under the principle of collective defense. But AUKUS has not uh, said anything about military uh, as it is not a military alliance, uh, basically. If it's not a military alliance, then what happened to Quad? There was this uh, grouping of quad also. Yes, so sir. Its relevance or or India has withdrawn that this AUKUS has uh, come up. What is the what is the basic reason behind uh, framing this AUKUS? China says it's, a, it's it's an extension of NATO. Uh, sir, it is the point of view of China because it is seen as an anti-China uh, activity. Uh, and uh, with regarding to Quad, uh, the Quad is relevant because uh, recently the Quad has been elevated to a ministerial level uh, dialogue and there was also a leader summit under the Quad and several uh, initiatives have taken uh, apart from China. There are several other initiatives also for uh, Quad like the, the vaccine initiative. Uh, it uh, promised to supply 1 billion vaccines and there are other uh, areas like green energy, uh, uh, resilient supply chains also coming up under Quad. Okay, so Taliban is back in Afghanistan? Yes, sir. Let's call it Taliban 2.0. So how is this Taliban 2.0 in your opinion is different from Taliban 1.0? Uh, sir, uh, uh, there are, uh, uh, we have to see how the Taliban 2 is different from Taliban 1 because it promised uh, that uh, it would not do the uh, hu uh, human right violations that were done in the earlier period. But we are yet to see how the Taliban 2 is different because uh, recently also the Taliban had uh, put a ban on, uh, 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 have imposed several restrictions on women's rights especially making a, a burqa essential for women to come out of the house and not women should not uh, take part in economic activities or in education. So, so a lot of restrictions have been put. So there is not a big difference between both these Taliban's. My last question to you. Should burqa be banned in India among students? Uh, what 
से अक्रॉस द बोर्ड सुट बुरका भी बना लीजिए आपने सर माय ओपिनियन इज दैट द बुरका शुड बी अलाउड इन सच अ वे दैट द वुमेन शुड चूज whether she wants to wear it or not the choice should be left to the woman okay thank you swati thank you sir uh, good afternoon swati good afternoon sir yes now you are from coimbatore yes sir so uh, why coimbatore is emerging as a medical hub uh sir there are uh, two main reasons for uh, medical uh, hub in coimbatore one is is uh, the uh, the speciality that coimbatore is enjoying there are several multi speciality and super speciality hospitals in coimbatore uh, for example the ganga hospital which is a ortho center uh, so that is the main reason and there are several uh, uh, initiatives to improve the infrastructure and the quality of human resources and the second reason is because of the affordability of uh, medical services in coimbatore compared to other metropolitan cities it is even very low compared to chennai okay all okay. right uh, not you have agriculture as your optional and you have read agriculture in your graduation also yes sir and now you are in income tax yes sir now what is the issue regarding agricultural income and should there be any changes in the taxation style of agricultural income Uh, so at present uh, the taxation of agricultural income is left to the states uh, the states uh, have not mostly put any tax on agricultural income so far uh, so my opinion is that we can progressively start taxing agricultural income also based on uh, different slabs okay and do we need to disclose the agricultural income in the income tax returns of the central government uh sir uh, i'm not exactly aware of it sir but i think it it not, need not be disclosed so but i'm not very sure of that okay just check it yes right. yes so now tell me what changes need to be done regarding the sedition laws in india um sir uh, at present the government has uh, sought to reconsider the sedition laws uh my opinion is that we can have uh, two options one is that the sedition law can be completely revoked and suitable changes can be made into other laws uh, so as to prevent uh, any uh, incitement of violence the second thing is that a uh, second option would be that the sedition law can be narrowly defined so as to clearly differentiate between what will constitute sedition and what will not so as to ensure that freedom of speech and expression uh can take place uh in a in a right way okay all right uh, what is your opinion on indian government banning the meat exports temporarily uh sir uh, the uh, ban on the prohibition on wheat exports recently uh, is in the backdrop that uh, the wheat production in in india had gone down especially with regard to the unprecedented heat waves and the early onset of summer uh and uh, the second reason is that the global uh, wheat prices have gone up due to the disruption of supply chains and hence uh india the price rise in india is also sharp so india seeks to safeguard its domestic interest and at the same time to the uh, obligations that india is already having uh with res respect to the neighboring countries like uh bangladesh and afghanistan okay all right uh do you think the farm laws uh, should have been withdrawn by the government uh sir it had been a necessity that the government had to withdraw but i think the laws should be brought back this time with broader consultations because i feel that the laws are for the betterment of the agriculture sector it offered a lot of opportunities for the sector by increasing the number of buyers by by bringing in more competition and ensuring more flow of investments into uh, infrastructure development okay all right uh, where does uh, from which country does india import all the fertilizers and what kind of fertilizers do we import uh sir uh one country that we are importing is from russia 
and uh, i'm not exactly sure of the other countries so but we are importing uh, our uh, urea uh, dap and uh, most of our potash requirements is uh, imported from the other countries india does not have any potash reserves in india okay all right uh, now tell me uh, how is the agricultural power sector you know also affects the uh, discoms the all kind of subsidies that we give to the farmers how does it impact the uh, discoms uh sir uh, providing uh, free electricity or uh, electricity at a subsidized rate to the farmer farmers is a cause of concern to the discoms as uh, they are already under a very poor financial condition uh, uh, without charging properly a uh, proper uh, rates for the uh, electricity in uh, farming sector it leads to uh, 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 a use that is uh, to excessive use of electricity and that is also depleting the groundwater so uh, so we have to rethink the way the electricity subsidy is being given we can uh, introduce a metering of electricity into the agriculture so how much electricity is used is being recorded and we can go for dbt or pro rata pricing of electricity okay thank you swati thank you sir swati yes sir good afternoon sir good afternoon okay swati you are from tamil nadu yes sir okay fine so uh, swati we see that uh, uh, since the last maybe one year or something uh, there has been a constant uh, invocation of language issues right in tamil nadu recently i think three days back uh, uh, honorable minister of the tamil nadu government he gave a very controversial statement that you know those uh, the, those people who are speaking hindi we can see that you know they are uh, selling uh, uh, just snacks here okay so why is there sort of suddenly a rise in these uh, uh, language issues why it is being invoked again and again by some politicians or uh, maybe people on social media also why it is being done uh, sir uh... the recent uh, uh, hindi uh, controversy has been a historical has had a historical reason uh, from uh, uh, from our independence uh, the state had raised uh, objection against uh, hindi imposition uh, we can, we have seen the anti hindi agitations also uh, so at present the state has been uh, uh very vocal uh, especially because uh, it feels that uh, hindi would be imposed on the state and that this, the the people should be given a choice whether to learn uh, hindi or any other language so if they had they are given a choice then it would be a more voluntary uh learning of hindi so i think it is against the imposition okay okay fine that's good cool. so uh, swati there is always a lot of talk about dravidianism okay but uh, we see that in various texts whether it is sangam literature or uh, rigveda we always uh, find mention of tamil nadu right and tamil culture and uh, various indian uh, various religious texts they are also present in tamil as well they are tamil translation has been done several uh, years ago so uh, when they when it is evident that you know there is a sort of cultural syncretism uh, syncretism between uh, other parts of india and tamil nadu there is no uh, sort of you know a separation then why this uh, philosophy of dravidianism is something that is you know uh, being related to in tamil nadu why do so many people relate to it um so uh, uh it uh, has the political uh, uh uh role uh because uh, the dravidianism has been promoted as a part of uh, uh it, it is seen as a political policy in tamil nadu uh, it is uh, uh taken place it takes place in uh, the context of uh, social justice and the pride that the tamil nadu would take in its culture its rich culture and tradition 
so that is the uh, uh, the reason for uh, so much relation to dravidianism in uh, tamil nadu okay great great so uh, you have taken agriculture as your optional these days we see that uh, you know in case of uh, urban areas vertical gardening is being practiced a lot whether it is uh, you know on pillars on bridges and even in large buildings that are being newly constructed as well so uh, what is the importance of vertical gardening and is it sustainable the plants that are grown in case of a vertical garden are they sustainable uh sir uh, to answer the first part of the question uh, the the proliferation of vertical gardening in uh, urban areas especially has a uh, multiple benefits to offer Uh, the first thing is that it improves the aesthetic uh, nature of the place the second thing is that it has some utilitarian benefits like it can uh, absorb the carbon emissions from the place it can reduce the pollution levels it can reduce the noise pollution as well and uh, the the microclimate is improved so we can mitigate the urban heat heat island effect uh, sir uh, 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 about the sustainability uh, the plants are uh, require a, a high maintenance when compared to the plants that are grown in ground so the maintenance is a major challenge with uh, regard to its sustainability okay okay good so uh, you have been allotted irs okay yes sir so can you tell me what is uh, our current tax to gdp ratio in india Uh, sir, it is at around twelve percent, a little less than twelve percent. Okay, okay. Is it comparable to other developed countries, or do we need to improve on this front? Um, sir, uh, I'm exactly not sure of the other countries comparison, but we have to improve a lot on the tax to GDP ratio. There is a potential uh, of reaching seventeen, eighteen percentage of uh, GDP tax as a uh, a uh, cbdt has already mentioned okay okay can you tell me what is the contribution of direct taxes uh, in a uh, total tax collection what percentage does direct tax constitute for uh, it is about 50 percentage to the to the tax collections okay okay good so uh, you have done your graduation from The RVS Agricultural College in Tanjore. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. So Tanjore is famous for the Brihadishwara Temple. Yes, sir. And it was uh, consecrated by an emperor of the Chola dynasty. Chola dynasty is one of the you know foremost well-known uh, kingdoms of Tamil Nadu. What are some of the social features that can be learned from the dynasty? or from the uh, from their way of uh, administering their kingdom um uh, sir uh, uh, the things that we can learn from the chola dynasty uh, is that uh, one thing is that uh, with regard to administration uh, there has been a system of democracy that was developed in that time itself it is called the kudavolai uh, system of elections wherein the local people will elect the local head uh, so there have been a lot of criteria to ensure that the administration takes place efficiently and it is more people oriented so that thing we can learn from the chola dynasty and um, uh so uh, i'm at present not able to think of any other uh, thing no problem so uh, uh the rock cut sculptures of mahabalipura they are world famous and you know uh, it's a world heritage site also what is special about the rock cut sculptures there uh sir so, uh, the uh, uh so i think the sculptures are made from a single rock uh so uh, so but i'm not exactly sure of the uh, specialities okay okay no problem so uh, swati uh, recently there was an issue 
uh, wherein the uh, some religious rituals were carried out at the uh, one of the old sun temples in kashmir right which is a asi monument so there was a lot of discussion on this issue that uh, you know whether uh, the temples which are uh, you know, which have been notified by asi as heritage sites whether worship should take place there or not like the shore temple is there in mahabalipuram it is also a heritage site and worship is currently not happening there so what is your understanding of the issue that those heritage sites which are well known temples which have been well known temples if there is a uh, demand by the people that you know worship should be allowed at those places then how should uh, the issue be tackled um so i think we have to adopt a balanced approach in this place uh, we have to ensure that the safeguard is there for the heritage sites and at the same time people should also be allowed uh, for their worship because uh, it is a part of their culture and traditions so uh, we have to have a balance between both okay okay uh, you must have come across a recent issue in madurai also where in a very well known uh, religious function which happens there every year it was you know uh, restricted by the state government and then after subsequent protests the state government decided that okay fine uh, we'll allow it so what was the controversy about um sir uh, i have not uh, come across the issue so i'll read upon it okay no thank you swati thank you sir swati uh yes sir okay so see as far as your knowledge is concerned there there is absolutely no issue just that how you present that knowledge so when you were whenever you are giving any answer think about the cross question that can come up right so be very very specific in whatever you are saying right uh, try to minimize see we all carry some kind of prejudice so try to minimize that prejudice if it cannot go but ideally we should try to curb our instinct of prejudice we, we tend to form prejudice see uh, why i am saying this i asked you question related to taliban so yes. this is taliban 1 1.0 1.0 and said that uh, the parda system uh, yes. so i tell you something uh, having a, a burqa system may or may not be curbing women rights right because that's what you substantiated in second part of the question when i said that should uh, uh, burqa be banned in india because in india you come across muslim women uh, who are relatively uh, uh, independent and like you and all of us so in india we we come across uh, uh, you know society which are which are relatively quite liberal in terms of observing or, or extending uh, freedom to women i'm not saying we are completely liberal but yeah in comparison to other countries we probably are at, at you know are better off so your perception about women empowerment and liberty is different and you are framing your opinion on uh, afghanistan based on that that just one parameter that is burqa so of that instead yes sir definitely can say that there are issues and they are known to be uh, against women uh, liberties and freedom yes. and uh, we need to see that whether they they they, are, they have improved what they are promising that they are they are improved and they are more liberal this time and they are more accommodative but we we need to see we, we need to get the human right reports Mm-hmm. So this would be the confirmed thing. Like these are just you know bits and pieces report that are coming up. So we should be more professional in commenting on issues about which we actually are not uh, clear or or getting information first hand. Yes, in terms of India's uh, issues, we are getting information first hand. Maybe because you are we, we are seeing girls across. Uh, uh us in our society in our village in our cities but we are not getting information correct information maybe 
from other country so be very specific in terms of and very professional in terms of expressing your opinion yes sir that is one part second part since you have studied agriculture and so definitely there will be questions related to agriculture farm laws would be one of them i asked you a question about see uh we have we are following democracy in which like you know majority rules if we follow that rule then ideally we should have ignored that farm protest but since it is about the welfare of the people and we we have pledged that we will we'll follow the inclusive inclusiveness so even if certain section of the society or group is protesting we need to take them together in holistic development that's what we call we, we always talk about this inclusive growth na yes sir there will be going to say 70% people are getting food so what was the point thinking about uh, uh, remaining 30% but we are focused on we we, we have taken this place that will will uh, go for inclusive growth so that inclusiveness requires that every bit of a farmer is happy with whatever decision is taken so that is the reason why farm law was withdrawn yes sir third one is a, a technical thing just a minor thing of course the question on office it yes, is sir. a fact so we should not be surprised to see if it materializes or if it sustains a couple of years there is substantial uh, i mean merit in the uh, statement of china that it may become nato someday because anyway the wording is security pact right Yes, sir. always increase the ambit of this and ultimately become a uh, military uh, alliance it is not right now but the wording is important right so these are these minor things that you need to focus on that's it when is your interview by the way uh, so on 19th of may 19th of may so uh, do one thing keep reading newspaper especially the current ones before yes, going when is your interview first half or second half Uh, first half sir first half carry the newspaper or as when you are waiting in upsc they, they 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 provide you with newspapers right yes sir quickly go through that uh, at least you know couple of newspapers if they if they don't provide at least carry uh, indian express or the hindu with you yes sir yes sir. How, much you, how much did you get last time uh, so 184 184 so as far as knowledge and everything is concerned everything is fine it's just that they would expect more from you this time so be more professional in your answering that's it that's all is needed some polishing work is needed that's it nothing else knowledge part is done just polish your answers that's it best of luck thank you sir hello swati you did well you have a very good personality and you are already in the civil services so as i told that they will be expecting a little bit more However, most of the things are fine. Just take a look at the agricultural income. It is also there in the news that many people are trying to evade the taxes through agricultural income. Okay, so ask some senior or do some research on this. I think this was the only gap area which I found. Uh, rest all the performance was good. Thanks. Yes, Thank you, sir. Okay, Swati. Yes, sir. So, uh, Swati, you come across as a very good and positive candidate, right? you have uh, scored a good marks earlier also so i think uh, you know you will do quite well as sir mentioned keep reading newspapers that is very important the issues which are related to tamil nadu whether it is related to uh, state finances because the state government i have read some editorial that it keeps on raising the issues like tax devolution and uh, uh, you know whether finances uh, how much should be delegated and all so keep a track of that and also language issues they you know keep on uh, coming almost every month or so because it is being discussed a lot whether on social media or even in newspapers also so that would be good to go through and uh, you are well prepared with your optional just i would say that uh like the historical a little bit historical facts which are related to tamil nadu you know uh, people tend to ask some questions okay uh, about sangam literature maybe here and there 
and uh, you must have come across that uh, uh, the finance minister has quoted thiruvallavu on some occasion the pm has also quoted him so just a basic understanding right what were uh, some of their important works and uh, the uh, heritage sites which are in uh, uh tamil nadu since you are from tanjore so uh, something can be asked about the temple itself yes, okay sir. i think in uh, recently i think 4 5 years back 1000 years of the temples was celebrated yes, sir. so that was a very significant event so you know just you can keep a track of uh, the historical facts and a little bit about the geography of tamil nadu also you have neat theories on your daf so so something about nilgiris and uh, the hilly areas of tamil nadu what are the issues you know, that would be very good okay all the best thank you sir not every aspirant has an ias uncle or a bhaiya who has prepared for upsc to guide them i am sajal and i have mentored almost 200 rankers in last 4 5 years upsc preparation is a long difficult journey and it is easy to get lost due to lack of guidance many deserving candidates like you are unable to crack this exam we know what challenges you face and that's why civil steely follows a personalized student centric and evidence based approach through our mentorship program every student is assigned a dedicated mentor who helps you learn and apply the strategies of our past toppers and before i tell you about our offline batches hear it from our students uh, it has several sub programs like mentorship program prelims test series mains test series uh, the current affairs programs called the samachar manthan and the value addition program for uh, prelims called smash and the most uh, helpful to me has been the mentorship program mera mentor mujhe subah 4 baje mere ko agar main 3 4 din unse touch mein nahi rahunga to mere ko 4 baje message karenge tumhare jo targets the वो तुम्हारे अचीव हुए नहीं हुए क्योंकि बहुत सारे स्ट्रेस आते हैं बहुत सारी चीज़ें होती हैं ये सब मैं डिस्कस करता था अपने मेंटर से विद इन अ मंथ अवर स्टूडेंट्स कैन फील रियल टैंजिबल इम्प्रूवमेंट इन देयर प्रिपरेशन एंड परफॉर्मेंस सो आई बीन एबल टू कॉम्प्रीहेंसिवली इम्प्रूव माई प्रिपरेशन विद दिस प्रोग्राम एंड आई वुड हाईली रिकमेंडेड रणधीर सर के साथ रखे मेरी एफिशियंसी बहुत ज़्यादा बढ़ गई है मुझे ये भरोसा है कि मैं फिल्म आने वाले में क्रैक करूँगा इनरोलमेंट फॉर अवर सुपर फिफ्टी बैच is open now we'll help you achieve your dreams as we help these rankers so wahi se main civil daily ko follow kar raha hu 